Hey guys, what's up, Baru? You know what really grinds my gears? Hiding information in events that speak of things in other regions. Yeah, Hoyo is doing the sussy lore thing again. Welcome to another video of a guy who scares people with technology. So is it any wonder people are afraid of technology? Technology! This video is gonna go over the... <clears throat> the Fontaine Research Institute of Kinetic Energy Engineering, a quick rundown on what this research institute is, a short theory about the possibility of an energy war within Fontaine, as well as the characters involved in said war. Finally, some speculations on what else could happen based on what I've stated. As usual, timestamps will be down in the comments and description. So on with the video! From the latest Vibro Crystal event, there's a hint on a research organization in Fontaine, aptly named the Fontaine Research Institute of Kinetic Energy Engineering. This research institute was described by Anatole to be an organization dedicated to the study of machines and energy. Anatole calls this institute the Academy, however, compared to the Sumeru Academia, they are anything but. So research and technology is the number one priority, and they do not exercise any responsibility over the people of Fontaine, implying that that there is already a different organization or another official group, likely Fontaine's government or the God of Justice. Nor do they conduct research for educational purposes. And paired with their unspoken motto of anything goes when it comes to research, this makes me think that the institute itself is a separate entity within Fontaine, but shares resources and relations with Fontaine itself, meaning neither side is allowed to intervene in each other's activities. Unless, of course, it's the God of Justice. Despite this, Fontaine has greatly benefited from the institute. Introduced Using innovations known only as clockwork mechanisms and kinetic cores. Now, we've already seen quite a few instances of clockwork devices as well as kinetic cores within the game, but it was never in the spotlight. We've also never had any characters of note who made and used such clockwork devices, at least not until now. The founder of this research institute is Alain Guillotin, or Guillotin, regarded as a genius and the presumed creator of said mechanisms and cores. Now, the few clockwork items I could find within the game is the bell, known for its clockwork rhythm when used in combat, which doesn't work anymore. And for kinetic cores, the closest thing I could find are the cores from Ruin Guards, especially the perpetual core of the Ion Blight Drake, since kinetic energy is, in simple terms, energy created through exerted force, or movement. Apparently, we already have one iteration of how both kinetic cores and clockwork mechanisms work in tandem and we can find it through the Evermotion mechanical painting, if you guys could still remember that. Now our good friend Felix Yog says that kinetic or kinesis cores are a form of clockwork devices, meaning that whatever Elaine Guillotine invented was more or less the same thing. It can create motive force for a long period of time as long as its mainspring is wound up every so often. Basically, it's a wind-up core that produces energy. Now this could be one of the altered iterations of Elaine Guillotine's inventions, based on his possible research findings. Alain Guillotine could have possibly taken cues from the Ruin Guards from all over Tevat. The description from the Perpetual Cores fits the kinetic core and clockwork mechanisms of the Evermotion painting as well, if not nearly. Now something interesting about Fontaine is that there is currently a decline in a special energy source in Fontaine, and this clockwork kinetic energy is possibly that special energy source that they were talking about. Which leads me to the main goal of quite a lot of researchers in Fontaine as well as the Vibro Crystal event, that is to create energy. The Vibro Crystal and its harmonics create some sort of energy when taking part in glorious combat, and Fontaine itself uses a lot of these kinetic cores and mechanisms, as mentioned by Anatole. This means that there could be a sort of race to create a new form of energy production before this clockwork kinetic energy device stops working, which could mean the end of Fontaine itself itself because quite a lot of things in Fontaine rely on Alain Guillotine's invention. And whoever creates it first is basically the new Alain Guillotine of Fontaine, replacing all of his inventions with that new energy source. Fontaine, from my understanding, is a place that's the pinnacle of technological advancement, and we have theorized time and time again that it will be a steampunk form of the Industrial Revolution. The countries or places that will have been taken inspiration from is up to you. But I'm banking on French, British, and maybe even American industrial age. And the reason for that is because apart from French names in-game, we now have Alain Guillotine and Edwin Eastinghouse, which to me are names from the same three countries. But again, it's up to Hoyo, whichever inspiration Fontaine will be. Think of Bioshock games and other countries that it might have taken inspiration from. Basically, that's how I see Fontaine. 
Let's talk about Edwin Eastinghouse. Eastinghouse was said to be a senior technician that apparently caused an explosion at the institute. Very little was mentioned about the incident apart from Eastinghouse being missing after it. Anatoly mentions that not all the P followed by dot 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 were found, meaning that there's a possibility that more people were involved in the accident and are also still missing. Lastly, the explosion regarding Eastinghouse's experimental failure did not include losing all the experimental data that came with it, only that it returned as quote unquote new and improved end quote processes and management systems which is weird since it was Eastinghouse's experiment assuming the experiment was in his lab or at least where he was all of that data should have been taken along with the explosion leading me to think that there was some sort of subterfuge involved or that someone sabotaged Eastinghouse's experiments and maybe stole his experimental data or that Eastinghouse faked his death for reasons unknown and that he left his data with someone within the institute to use now before the explosion incident and Edwin Eastinghouse's disappearance, he was mentioned to be conducting experiments using something called Archeum, and that the experiment was aimed at dealing with a so-called waterline crisis. At the moment, we don't know what Archeum is, and we're not given any information about the experiment as well. But we do know that Eastinghouse was using it to solve the waterline crisis, which with some creative theorizing, leads me to the town of Petricor. If you guys could still remember, Petricor is known for its beauty and features a waterfall. Eastinghouse could be solving a a dilemma in Fontaine regarding its water supply. This ties in with speculations I've had in my previous video that Fontaine is a steampunk city surrounded by water. Because we have a waterline crisis in Fontaine, we can assume that Fontaine is either running out of water or there's too much water, depending on whatever this waterline crisis really is. Along with the possible race to create a new source of energy, Eastinghouse is possibly making a new energy source using maybe water and archaeum, even though we don't know what archaeum really is. Creating a dam of sorts that harnesses energy from water and maybe using Archeum in some way to enhance it. This is still speculation and we are only inferring these events based on something so minuscule like a water crisis and piecing it together with bits of older lore that have absolutely no official relation to each other. Edwin Eastinghouse to me seems like a mix of two prominent characters in a technological war known as the War of Currents. History 101 with Aru. So there's this thing called the War of Currents. And the people that took part in such a war include Thomas Edison, George Westinghouse, and Nikola Tesla. Dummy version TLDR, Thomas Edison, who invented the light bulb, enters a war with Nikola Tesla, who is creating innovations using electricity. Thomas Edison was fighting for direct current, and Nikola Tesla was pursuing alternate current. I won't spoil you any other details, but this current war lasted for about 10 years, and to my understanding, Nikola Tesla won the war, representing alternating current against Thomas Edison's direct current. George Westinghouse, who was an entrepreneur at the time, purchased the patents for Nikola Tesla's inventions and slowly ending the war of the currents. As for Thomas Edison, he basically changed or remodeled his company and became the creators of what we now know as General Electric. How this might have played out in Genshin, however, was that Alain Guillotine started the innovation of kinetic cores similar to how Thomas Edison invents direct current, creating the special energy source that the majority of Fontaine uses, which is true. This breakthrough later slowly declined, which is actually happening on Fontaine, sparking a race of a similar war of the currents, but this war was more about energy production. Because we don't know how long ago Alain founded the institute, Eastinghouse could also be a mix of both Edison and Westinghouse. And was utilizing Archeum and the waterline crisis to create a new form of energy source. Now, there's one character that isn't mentioned, and that's Tesla. Now, we still don't know if Tesla will even be included, but I think he or someone that could reference him in-game was the one that sabotaged Eastinghouse's experiments, leading to the explosion incident, as well as stealing his research data and creating a new and improved version. Again, this is entirely speculative, and there's also tons of other possibilities. In previous patches, we've had a recurring two Harbingers appear in the main story, apart from Mondstadt. Child and Senora in Liwe, Senora and Scaramouche in Inazuma, and Scaramouche and Dottore in Sumeru. So there's a possibility that Dottore will be the next Harbinger we face off with in Fontaine, but there's also another Harbinger that should be included. Now, Dottore works with a very prominent Harbinger within the Fatui. Both Dottore and this character could possibly mirror Westinghouse and Nikola Tesla in the War of Currents. Pantalo 
Stone is a very rich harbinger who believes that he can one day topple the scales and control everything using his wealth. If Pantalone is Eastinghouse, or was the person who sabotaged Eastinghouse, then he could very well be the harbinger controlling Fontaine from within, and is the financial reason for the Fatui to be there. As for Dottore, we might still remember his other alias known as Escher, and we never got any info on who Escher is apart from being Dottore. So Escher could still be his same alias once we get to Fontaine. That along with Fossilors being sussy with the courtroom makes for a great masquerade of the guilty, where we may have to track down Dottore's alices and possibly get Pantalone controlling the declining economic status of Fontaine. But that's if Pantalone and Dottore will come back again in Fontaine. Honestly, it's quite a fitting place for both of them to be in since Pantalone is the grandiest wealthy person while Dottore is a very shrewd scientist. This segment here is just a quick Honkai reference for characters that may or may not be included in Fontaine. Since Honkai Impact has quite the characters that are famous in the industrial era and even the modern era. First we have Frederica Nikola Tesla and Lyser Einstein who are very important characters in the Honkai game. As they are one of the founding members of Anti-Entropy, basically a group that fights Honkai. And it would be cool if they had some sort of cameo or semi lookalikes in Fontaine. Next are Schrodinger, Edison, and Plank. These characters are only seen in visual novels and found as stigmata in game. They're also one of the founders of Anti-Entropy, but have fallen in history or ended up in another dimension. Next is Sid Mal, who is quite a fan favorite of mine because I like these types of characters and her aesthetic fits with what Fontaine is going to be like, honestly. Since she only appeared in-game about once, as well as the visual novel for Bronya and Sally, who are also characters that I want to see in Fontaine. And there we go, the Fontaine Research Institute of Kinetic Energy Engineering, as well as some possible characters that we might see in the later patches. So tell me in the comments, is the Tori coming back to Fontaine with Pantalone? I don't know. If you did enjoy, don't forget to leave a like and give a subscribe as well since you watched the entire video. Finally, click on that bell icon if you want to see more of my videos. The only reason I decided to speedrun this type of video was because it was about Fontaine, and I love Fontaine. And another reason is because I watched The Current Wars. And if you watch the current wars, then you know why I made this video. Hopefully we get to actually find more info about these characters as well as know more about the institute itself. Anyways, that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one, yeah? Like, comment, if you enjoyed, subscribe for more rap links, and stay mad, theorists. Bye!